In the world of music and fashion, controversy is no stranger and the Satan Shoes by Lil Nas X and MSCF product studio shook the globe with a storm of reactions. This audacious collaboration unleashed a pair of sneakers that were anything but ordinary. They were customized versions of the iconic Nike Air Max 97S, but with a devilish twist. The midsoles of these shoes contained a drop of human blood, adding a shocking element of the macabre to their already distinctive design. And if that wasn't enough to turn heads, the shoes were sold online at a mind-boggling cost of $1,018 per pair. But the controversy didn't stop at the price tag or the unique features. The production was limited to just 666 pairs, a number synonymous with the devil and the occult. And at the helm of this controversy was none other than rapper Lil Nas I, adding a layer of celebrity intrigue to the mix. With the shoes sold out in less than a minute, the stage was set for a showdown that no one saw coming. The storm was brewing and it was Nike who stepped into the eye of it. As the dust was still settling from the initial shock of the Satan Shoes release, Nike, the titan of the shoe industry, took a step that would ignite a new round of controversy. With a reputation built over decades, the brand found itself in an unanticipated situation tangled with a shoe that was not only polarizing but also featured its iconic logo without its consent. Nike filed a lawsuit against MSCHF Product Studio Inc., the New York-based company responsible for producing the notorious Satan shoes. Their claim? trademark infringement and dilution. Nike alleged that the shoes were sold under the deceptive pretense of being an official Nike product, thus misleading consumers and tarnishing the reputation of the brand. But here's an interesting twist in the tale. The shoes were sold with a drop of human blood in the soles, stirring a whirlwind of ethical questions and concerns. Sold online for a whopping $1,018 per pair, they reportedly sold out in less than a minute. A clear indication of the shoe's appeal to a certain demographic, but at what cost to Nike's image, one might ask. Where does Lil Nas X fit into all this? Interestingly, the controversial rapper, despite his close association with the shoe, was not named as a defendant in the lawsuit. Although he was the face of the Satan shoes, it seems Nike chose to focus their legal efforts on the creator's MSCHF product studio, Inc. Nike's lawsuit sparked a new wave of discussion, controversy and intrigue around the Satan shoes. The legal action, instead of quelling the storm, seemed to fan the flames of controversy, drawing even more attention to the already infamous shoes. Nike's action fueled the controversy even further, pushing the Satan shoes into an even brighter spotlight. The courtroom became the next stage for the Satan shoes drama. As the saga unfolded, Nike, the global sportswear giant, filed a lawsuit against MSCHF Product Studio, the New York-based company that produced the contentious shoes. Nike's bone of contention, the Satan shoes, which were sold out in less than a minute at a hefty price tag of over $1,000 per pair, infringed on and diluted its trademark. The shoes bore the unmistakable Nike logo, but were produced without the company's consent or authorization. Nike sought not only to halt the fulfillment of the remaining orders, but also pursued damages. The suit was a bold move, a clear message from Nike that it would not stand by as its brand was used without permission, especially in such a controversial manner. But the legal battle was about more than just trademark infringement. It brought to light the complexities of artistic expression and the culture of collaboration. MSCHF, the creators of the Satan Shoes, weren't just selling footwear. They were making a statement pushing boundaries and challenging norms. Their creations, including their previous Jesus Shoes, were as much pieces of art as they were consumer products. But the question arose, where does one draw the line between artistic freedom and commercial exploitation? Can a brand's trademark be used freely in the name of art and expression? Or does it cross a line becoming a violation of intellectual property rights? The lawsuit sparked a conversation about the intersection of art, commerce and branding. It highlighted the delicate balance artists and companies must strike in our increasingly collaborative culture where the lines between art and commerce are often blurred. The legal battle, far from silencing the controversy, raised even more questions about the intersection of art, commerce and branding. Just when it seemed like the controversy could only escalate, an unexpected resolution emerged. 
Just like the unpredictable twist in a gripping novel, the legal drama surrounding the Satan Shoes took a surprising turn. Nike Inc., the multinational corporation at the heart of the dispute, reached an amicable settlement with the New York-based MSCHF product studio Inc. In a move that silenced the clamor, MSCHF agreed to a voluntary recall of the notorious Satan Shoes, effectively halting their circulation, but the resolution didn't stop there. MSCHF, taking a step further, offered full refunds to all purchasers of the controversial footwear. It wasn't just the Satan Shoes buyers who could claim their money back. Even those who had bought MSCHF's previous creation, the Jesus Shoes, were included in the refund offer. The lawsuit and subsequent settlement didn't just serve as a solution to a trademark infringement issue. It also threw open the doors to a broader discussion. The Satan Shoes controversy sparked debates far and wide on the artistic messages that creators attempt to convey. It questioned the thin line between inspiration and infringement, raising questions on collaboration culture and the ambiguity of its boundaries. Moreover, it also highlighted the issue of intolerance. The shoes, with their devil-themed design and a drop of human blood, stirred up a storm of controversy. People's reactions were divided, with some appreciating the bold artistic statement, while others viewed it as an offensive gesture. The controversy served as a mirror to society, reflecting our diverse perspectives and the extent of our tolerance for unconventional ideas. And so the saga of the Satan Shoes came to a close, leaving behind a trail of questions about the boundaries of art and commerce and the power of controversy in our modern world. Yet it's undeniable that the Satan Shoes have left an indelible mark on pop culture, reminding us of the intriguing intersection where art, commerce and controversy meet.